the AMD booth. They've got a couple pretty cool show deals. You can get an X3 processor for only 50 bucks, which is pretty crazy. Actually, I need Slick to come over here and check this out. Oh, that's too bad. It looks like they moved our light for some reason, but we're actually running this whole Ifinity setup off of an NCIX PC that's running an AD, a Radeon 6950 graphics card. So let's move back around to the front. AMD's booth is actually pretty darn cool because they have not only an ultimate Ifinity gaming system going on here where you can play... I think this is the game that plays for you if you set it to the uh, easy enough difficulty level which is handy because, you know, not everyone's great at video games. But they also have a bit of a museum thing going on. So they've got an old ATI Radeon graphics card from before the acquisition, and then they're showing how far AMD has taken that Radeon technology to the point where now, with a single card, you can power three 1080p monitors in DirectX 11 games. No big deal. They've also got a little museum of a wide variety of past and present AMD processors going back all the way to the days when AMD and Intel actually shared the same socket technology. Pretty cool stuff. Welcome to the Kingston booth. You know, I, Antec, one of our guys from Antec just showed up and was like, yeah, so my systems are all over the place, but I'm not even attending the tech fair, but you can actually find a ton of Antec exposure pretty much everywhere. They've got the Antec Cooler 920, Antec High Current Pro 850 power supply as well as a P280 case going on on the Kingston booth here. However, we're going to stay a little bit more focused on Kingston. So Kingston, as you guys may or may not know, is world number one in terms of memory products. They are enormous. They make more memory than anybody else. Everything from SODIMS to Value RAM to Performance HyperX gaming memory, they pretty much do it. Now, they've also more recently gotten into SSDs. They have, once again, a wide variety of SSDs from their Sandforce SSD Now V Plus series, which is more value-oriented, all the way up to their premium Sandforce HyperX. So these are using higher speed NAND flash, even though it's with the same controller, to achieve faster reads and write speeds. Samsung is also enormous when it comes to USB flash. How did I say Samsung? Because what I meant to say was Kingston. However, it looks like they haven't managed to actually put any USB thumb drives at their booth. But, I mean, you've probably seen a Kingston thumb drive at some point in time. And as a special show deal, you can get an 8K Kingston Data Traveler for only 99 cents. Although those may be sold out at this time, because that was a pretty popular one earlier on in the day. So over here we have a Kingston SSD and Kingston memory-powered system. This is the new HyperX 3K, which is a more value-oriented edition of the HyperX. It performs the same but the endurance of the flash is a little bit lower, but it still comes with a three-year warranty, and it's still, according to continuous operation sort of mean methods of calculating, it should last for years and years and years. So it's a pretty safe bet. And there we've got some HyperX DDR3 going on in there as well. Welcome to the Corsair booth. We've got a wide variety of stuff here. Strangely, they don't have any RAM or USB flash, even though they're very well known for those products. Not much in the way of SSD. Corsair's booth is focused around their newer additions to their lineup. So that is cases, peripherals, and cooling. So right here, we've got the K90 and the K60. These are mechanical gaming keyboards optimized for MMO gaming as well as FPS gaming, respectively. Personally, my favorite is the K90 of those two because it has a blue backlight on it as well as programmable macro keys here. They've also got their H100 cooler, and I can't say enough good things about this. Honestly, in my opinion, every pre-done liquid cooling unit should be dual fan like this because that's where they start to really distance themselves from air cooling in terms of overclocking. The single fan ones are a little bit better than air sometimes, or they're competitive with air, but these dual fan ones, especially once you start cranking up the voltage, really pull away. Next we've got their M90 and M60, so these are MMO and FPS oriented products to go along with the keyboards themselves. So this one has a ton of different buttons, again optimized for MMO. Slick is for some reason removing buttons from the keyboard over there. And then next we've got the M60, which has the sniper button, which reduces the sensitivity when you're zoomed in so that you can more easily go for the optimal headshot. I have no idea how many people have put this on today, so it might be like covered in lice and stuff, but hopefully not. You know, Corsair applies a lice repellent spray to the insides of all... No, I'm just kidding, they don't do that. Uh, but this is a USB headset that features Dolby 7.1 Virtual. Personally, I'm not much of a virtual surround guy, and I would go with the Vengeance 1300 with the high-end sound card personally. However, it's great that they have both options available, whether you want a USB headset or an analog headset. 
For case, they have the Obsidian 550D. This is the first case Corsair has really done that is optimized for silent computing. So it has noise dampening foam here, as well as on the inside of the side panels. And you can also see that instead of having lots of ventilation and mesh, it uses closed panels in order to block a lot of the noise. So there's still room for ventilation. You can see there's vent holes here. Uh, you can't really see. It's from, wait, are they on that side? No, they're not on that side. They're on this side. There you go. Vent holes here. Slick was confused. Um, that allow you to still get the cooling you need. However, I wouldn't necessarily put, you know, a six core and dual GTX 690s in here. This is more for your mid-range performance gaming system that you want to keep nice and quiet. You don't have to keep it silent though. You can take these off, take off the magnetic removable easy clean fan filter here, and you can actually install more fans on the top and more fans on the side if you want to get the most cooling performance possible out of your Corsair case. Welcome to the BenQ booth. This will be the last booth in this round of video tours. They have a couple of really cool products at their booth. They have the 2420TX, which as you guys may or may not know, is pretty much my choice when it comes to 3D Vision 2 light boost capable displays. So this one just had a Windows update pop up, but they've got Batman Arkham City running on here right now. With 3D Vision 1 glasses, remember, light boost is compatible as long as you have a compatible monitor with either 3D Vision 1 or 3D Vision 2 glasses. Now they also have their GP2, and the GP2 is awesome. This is a Pico projector that is capable of using a battery backup. In fact, there is a deal at the show for $4.99 you get the GP2 projector with the battery backup, which is an amazing deal. The GP2 is capable of outputting up to 720p video and it fits, um, if you have really big pockets like, you know, cargo pants from the 90s, then you could totally put a GP2 in your pocket. It is LED backlit, which means you pretty much never have to replace the lamp makes it very convenient. I did a video about the GP2 as well. It has a huge, huge array of input options, including an iPhone dock that you can use to play videos that are stored on your iPhone or even over the network as well as HDMI input. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more videos about the tech fair as well as unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.